Hello, my name is Andrew Cole. I am I work with Diversified Fall Protection, and I'm here to train you on your fall protection. Any questions that you might have about it. The first thing to go over is the basics of fall protection. Fall protection is required by OSHA if you are more than four feet above the air and six feet from a leading edge. The basics of fall protection is there to prevent you from serious injury and death. If you can get a couple scrapes, bruises, maybe a broken bone, that's, that's a good day if it saves your life. To prevent a death and get a couple scrapes, it's a good day for fall protection. So the first steps about fall protection is to check your PPE. What we have here is a harness. The first steps of checking your harness before you don your harness is you want to check the webbing. The webbing inside on your harness, you want to look for any burn marks, frays, cuts, or rips on your harness. Just make sure that there, it is. It does not exceed a sixteenth of an inch. A sixteenth of an inch. If you do not have a tape measure on you, every harness has webbing stitching on the outside of the webbing. If a cut or a fray goes past that stitching, the harness needs to be destroyed. Anytime a PPE any of your PPE for fall protection is designated not deemable to wear, it should be cut up and destroyed. Now things to look for while you're going through your inspection of the webbing is the stitching. You have stitching patterns everywhere without your harness, with, along your harness. You want to look at the stitching, make sure that the stitching is intact, that there's none sticking out. Um, the if you have a certain type of harness, like this one, you have an impact indicator on the back of both, right below the D ring. If someone were to fall on this using this PPE, this indicator will pop open, and it will be flat. If that is the case, then you are to take it out of commission and cut it up and destroy it. The next steps after you're done looking at all of the webbing is to go on to your belt straps. These are for your legs, your leg straps. You want to look at the inside of the holes, make sure that there are no chips, there's no deformity inside every one of the rings. Make sure that they're in good condition. You also, this is considered part of the webbing too, so you also want to look for any cuts, burn marks, or frays that go along with this. Now we go over to the other leg strap. Do the same thing. It, everything appears to be in good condition. The next step is to check the D-ring on the back of your harness or all D-rings. This particular D-ring only, uh, this particular harness only has one D-ring. The D-ring on the back, you want to check for any deformities in the D-ring, any nicks, if it's bent in, if anything happened to it. You want to make sure that it's in full wo good working condition and that there are no deformities, no chips, no dings, uh, it's not bent in at all. If it is, take it out of commission and destroy it. So you're going through and you're inspecting. The next is the chest straps. The chest straps, you also want to do the same thing with the D-rings. Make sure that they're in good working condition. Make sure that they're, it's not deformed, there are no chips in it. Um, it's not bent, it's not, it's just in good working condition. It should look exactly like a square. Some are different. Some have belt buckles that actually clip together. And just one second and I'll show you what that is. In case you have the belt 
type of harness. It clips in. You want to make sure that it stays intact. You want to make sure that it releases, it's able to release before you put it on. It's in good working condition. Okay. After you've completed your inspection of your harness, it is now time to don your harness or put it on. The first thing before you put on your harness is you want to empty out your pockets. There should be nothing in your pockets that allows you or prevents prevents you from injuring yourself further in case you fall. So, we'll empty out our pockets. For demonstration purposes, I have to keep this on me. So when you put on your harness, one strap goes over your shoulder and the other strap goes over your shoulder so that the D-ring is on your back. The first step that I always do when I am putting on my harness is I put on my chest strap just to see where it lands, see if it needs to adjust any. The right spot for your chest strap one second, should be about breast level. If it's too high, it can choke you. If it's too low, when you fall, you'll be falling like this. You don't want that. You want to be, if you fall, you want to be comfortable in, in your harness. So we want to adjust this down to just about the breast, breast line, breast level. Okay, that's about breast level for me. Now we go on to our leg straps. You take your right leg strap, put it through the belt, and get it tight. Get it nice and comfortable. You don't want to put it too tight, but you want it to be comfortable for you. If it's too tight, you can cut off the blood circulation, the blood flow to your legs. If it's too loose, you can fall out of your harness. And in a few minutes, you'll see why it's important to have it comfortable and a comfortable tight and not loose. Now we grab the next strap, put it through. Never have any straps just hanging out. Always, always make sure you take care of these straps and they're not loose. If they're loose, they can get caught on something and wherever this goes, that's where I'll go. So you always want to make sure that you take care of your loop, your your excess straps. Okay. So if you look at this Something just happened. When I put my leg straps on, my chest strap came up to my neck. That means I have to do a little bit of adjusting. So with your type of harness, depending on which one you have, this one allows you, if you pull out and twist, it allows you to adjust the length of your harness. And as, as you pull closer and towards you, your harness will get back to where it needs to be, right about the breast level. And the reason why I keep saying this is for this reason. Your, your D-ring should be right in between your shoulder blades. It should be right where you can reach it. You should be able to reach the D-ring with, with yourself without any help. If you can't reach your D-ring, then it's on, it's either too loose or too tight. Now, when I say too loose or too tight, the example I always give is if you can fit your hand in, then you're good. But if you can make a fist and put it through, then it's too loose. And I'll demonstrate that.
right now, as you can see, this leg strap is too loose. I can go ahead and fit my whole fist within my pant legs in between that. That is too loose. It, it might feel comfortable to you, but when you fall, one, it, it messes up where the position of your D-ring, and two, if you fall, it will cause you to fall at a weird angle that you do not want. You want it to be nice and comfortable. If you have it too loose, like I said, you can cut off the blood circulation to your legs. And don't you put your hand through, but not make a fist and put it through. So. Now that that's all said and done, if you have it adjusted and it's on right, then your D-ring should sit exactly where it, where it needs to be, where you can reach. If you can't reach it, then keep readjusting until you can. The next step to your fall protection is to attach your lanyards or your SRLs. The reason why they say you need to be able to reach your own SRL is so that you can put it on yourself. Before attaching it, you want to inspect it. The way to do that is to make sure that any snap hooks or D-rings by OSHA should have a double locking mechanism. By that, for instance, this carabiner cannot open unless I twist and push. And it automatically locks back in place as soon as I let go. Same thing with the snap hook. I cannot open this snap hook without unlocking the back and pushing in. Now other inspections that you want to do, you want to make sure that this, the SRL actually can swivel or the lanyard. Um, for lanyards and this particular SRL, it is webbed. So you want to do the same inspection that you did before. You want to pull it all the way out. And then you want to slowly inspect the webbing to make sure that there are no cuts or frays or burn marks or any kind of damage to the webbing. The same thing goes for lanyards. Now a cable, you might find yourself using a cable SRL. The cable SRL is the same thing, it just has a cable inside. It's for sharp edges so that if you happen to fall uh, along a sharp edge, it will not rip, tear as easily as the webbing. So after you've done your inspection, the last step to inspecting your SRL is you want to pull it tight and it should act like a seatbelt if you pull it tight enough. It should lock in place to ensure that it'll catch you if you were to fall. So. After you've done all your inspection, the next step is to attach it to yourself. Now, if your SRL or if your harness is on right, you should be able to do this by yourself correctly and then always give it a tug. Always give it a tug to make sure it's on there properly. By OSHA, you should not have any. You should not have more than one thing attached to a D ring. Thank you for your time and be safe.